All right, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy Cousin Nerf, and today I got a special video that um I was kind of thinking of since I saw what happened on Twitter recently. Also, Maximilian dude made a video about this, which is kind of funny. So I figured, why not? I'll make my own video, give my own opinions and thoughts on this. And for those who understand, I'm Joey, aka Mr. Wiz, the um, tournament organizer and one of the most prominent members in the fighting game community. Um, posted a tweet recently asking like which game should headline evo basically being the main event slot for those who understand what the main event slot for let's say those who understand like boxing mma wrestling and many other sports whenever there's usually a bunch of games matches or whatever of that same genre going on usually the main event slot is reserved for the final match or event of the evening because the other matches are supposed to get the people compelled, hyped up, um, warm them up for the main event, which is supposed to be one of the best showcasings of the game or sport itself. And because of that, um, it is very prestigious and honorable to be in a main event slot for whatever it is that is going on. And traditionally for EVO, Street Fighter because EVO originally started as a Street Fighter tournament. Traditionally, Street Fighter usually closed out EVO. It's been closing out EVO for over a decade now, if I'm correct. And it was interesting to see that Mr. Wiz himself posted a poll asking people like what game would they like to see headline it. And because of that, I actually voted in the poll. And I actually will show you guys my answer for which games I think should do it. Now, for this, I would like to go about this video with giving my opinion on who should headline it based on for the prestigious honor and I also like to go over like who should headline it based on strategic value and it all makes sense very soon so for those who understand EVO biggest fighting game tournament in the world is always in August first week of August in Las Vegas it's gonna be Mandalay Bay and these are unlike most years for EVO it's usually eight games that are being highlighted for as in having pools to register for but for this time around it's actually nine um, which is very strange people didn't expect that to happen but um, these are the nine games Street Fighter 5, Tekken 7, Smash, Mortal Kombat, Soul Calibur 6, Unist, Dragon Ball, Blaze Blue, and Samurai Showdown um, these are the nine games and for anyone who is wondering when it comes to Sunday which is the final day of EVO there are four games that are going to be on the main stage for EVO. As it's going to be in Mandalay Bay's um, biggest arena main stage. And those games are going to be Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, Smash Ultimate, and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Now, this is very important. Um, we can probably assume that if they ask this question hypothetically, we could probably assume that we could just scratch off Street Fighter for being the last game to close out. I think it will close out for this year by disclaimer, but since this is a hypothetical and this is supposed to be fun, we'll talk about which games I which game on the Sunday lineup because I feel like the other five that are gonna be concluding by Saturday they should be ruled out. So we have left this Tekken 7, Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Now, in terms of the actual prestigious honor and how headlining the biggest tournament in the world, the amount of weight that it carries, I actually posted on Twitter and I said that it should be Tekken. Like I said in my tweet, I don't play Tekken, but I, ever since I've been following the FGC and whatnot, the Tekken community has always shown a lot of hype and they always pulled through. So, um, yeah, they're very passionate. I haven't heard too many bad things about Tekken. I haven't heard any drama about players and whatnot. And a lot of the players are very cool and welcoming. And the thing about Tekken is, when it comes to the games themselves, you never know what you're going to expect. For some games, you could probably expect Haruken, Haruken, Shoryuken to happen a lot. When it comes to certain matches in Tekken, how the maps are laid out and whatnot, it is a little different. I play Pokken, which is definitely not regular Tekken. But when I play Pokken... I could kind of, I enjoyed the hell out of it, and I can kind of understand where people are coming from with the whole Tekken side of things being different per matchup. It's funny because I know a lot of African Americans who are either into the FTC or they don't follow the FTC, and they own Tekken. It's very funny. Um, I might have to get myself a copy of Tekken just so I can play with all my friends. But 
yeah, over the years for Evo, Tekken has actually grown in terms of size. Um, you can look right here. If we go to Tekken on the 2018 Evo page, it said that Tekken had it was the number three or four game in terms of interest entrance, and yeah, they had 1547 back last year at Evo. Um, right now, they haven't revealed the numbers yet, but it looks like they're about 2,000 or so because they actually beat out Street Fighter on the list so far for the number of entrants for the tournament. It's Street Fighter 2,500, so we can say around 2,000 plus seems to be fair for the Tekken side of things. So despite the game being a few years old, the game is still growing in terms of the number of entrants for the game. So that means that people are like not only enjoying Tekken, but they're actually enjoying it to the point where they want to go to Evo and play it. So, traditionally, I will say, for the traditional honor, I'll say Tekken. Now, what I mean, now we're going to go into strategic value. Uh, what I mean by this is, it's actually pretty well known that, as a player, or for a viewership standpoint, you do not want to be in the final slot for EVO. And that is because, the second to last slot typically is the prime time hours for the event. That means, like... It'll be around 7, 8, maybe even 9 o'clock. And this is about the East Coast. And for many people, that's usually around the time they're um, still up and active. Um, the largest majority, the largest audience that you'll have available will be around those times. Many people are out of work if they're in some part of the country. I mean, some part of the world. Many people are just starting their day off, depending on what part of the planet they're at. And for some people, um, it's just a great time for them to be most available. So... Main eventing Evo means that you're probably remember this term is on the West Coast, so it's so funny enough. A lot of majors that happened before Evo, like Combo Breaker, which is in the Midwest, um, and by the way, it's not in Chicago. For the East Coast, we had CEO and whatnot. These are some of the majors that happened before Evo, so a lot of people are used to those Eastern times. Um, with the tournament being in the West Coast, it means that nine o'clock for the West Coast is actually midnight for the East Coast. So, like, if if Street Fighter was to start at around 10, 11 p.m. in Vegas, people are probably asleep in the East Coast. People got jobs they got to get to. It's the middle of the summer, and Monday's coming up. For some people, they may actually be going to school because it's the first weekend of August, transitioning into the official first full week. So some people may have school. Just that the viewers may have a lot of stuff going on. So because of that, what I mean by the strategic value is when if I had to put a game in that slot it would have to be either a game that wouldn't be hurt by the lack of viewers or it's a game that will benefit greatly from just having the prestigious honor of main eventing in EVO and for the first one I think in terms of who would not hurt the most in terms of honor I mean in terms of viewers would be Smash Bros Ultimate Smash sold over 13.8 million Copies. Um, I think they're going to hit about 14, maybe 14 and a half million, especially with the newly announced Switch Lite that came out. I mean, that's been announced today, and a lot, I know a bunch of people don't have a Switch yet. They're waiting for the new Pokemon games and whatnot. Uh, when more people get their hands on the Switch, most likely they're going to be buying Smash. So, in terms of numbers, there's going to be a bunch of people watching for Smash by itself. Um, I feel that with Smash, um, Mr. Wiz, though, has said that he thinks this game is going to break the viewership record. Um, because of that, if there's that many high hopes, one could argue if they put them in the main event slot, they wouldn't be hurting for viewers. You know, maybe a few hundred people to maybe a thousand people won't be able to watch because it's that really late at night. But, on the flip side, if they really do want Smash to break the viewership record that was previously set by Dragon Ball Fighters, they may actually want to put it in the second to last slot just so it could reap the benefits of being in that prime time slot for viewers and whatnot. So, on one hand, I would prefer if it was Smash those in the main event slot for that reason, because the loss of viewerships wouldn't hurt it as badly as it would for other games. But on the other hand, if they're trying to really break records and make Evo look more of a hype fest than it actually look more and more of a hype fest, they're probably going to put in the second to last slot. So for that reason, if we were to put a game in there who really benefits more from the prestigious honor of main event of Evo than the viewers, it would have to be Blaze Blue Cross Tech Battle. Because this game actually not only has the least amount of entrance so far for EVO, it is also one of the relatively 
less play games out there. I own BB Tag for the PS4, and I kid you not, sometimes I log in on there, there's only 20 people playing in the online lobbies. Um, when I look on the Steam charts and whatnot for this game, um, it's not looking too pretty. Actually, no, I don't mean Steam charts. Um, when I'm looking at charts for the game and I'm looking into the subreddit, subreddit is small, but it's very dedicated. Many people have commented, like, yeah, there's not that many people I can play as an entry-level player. So, this just speaks volumes that a lot of people are still playing are just the passionate crowd, which isn't a bad thing. Um, many games made it to EVO that proved that they didn't need EVO to be popular. One example is Eunice. Eunice is a game that started from, is a example of starting from the bottom, now they're here. Um, because of how passionate the fans were and whatnot, many people, Mr. Wiz and whatnot, saw that, oh, hey, Undernight Inverse should definitely be at EVO. And this is a game that has a lot of good things said about it. I haven't heard too many negative things about it. It's so complex, but the community is so passionate. Um, same goes for Tekken, actually. Funny anecdote is when I went to a, my previous local at a gaming lounge in Chicago, they had casuals for Tekken. The room was filled mostly with just Tekken players and they were super duper hype and I love to see that now for BB tag personally I own fighters I own BB tag I own guilty gear I ba basically I'm Arxis baby and I probably shouldn't be saying this but I would have preferred if guilty gear rev 2 an older game much older game been in this slot than BB tag and that's not to say bad things about BB tag because they got the best they got one of the best girls in all of anime Ruby in there and she's definitely better than Pretty much anyone who's watching this video, she's better than your waifu, and that is no cap. She's in the game, she's very popular to play and whatnot. The game is very fun, it's very stylish, there's a lot going on. It's very entertaining to watch. But, in terms of like popularity and whatnot, I feel like this game was to still be alive, or to grow over time. Having that main event slot would benefit it the most, just for the prestigious honor by itself. So that's pretty much my wrap up for this video guys, um, I want to know your opinions down below, which games, I want you guys to follow the prompt, which game do you think should be there just for the idea and concept of the prestigious honor of main event EVO, which game should be there strategically in terms of like, oh hey, if many people can tune in, this game wouldn't be hurt by that, and speaking of which, I forgot one thing, in case someone says that, well why don't they move the main event slot? down to the same time as the prime time slot would, the current prime time slot would be the thing is I think they'll cause issues um, if you're playing on on day three it means that you went through two grueling days of playing a tournament um, many players especially those who aren't playing on the main event slot prefer it the way it is now because let's just look through Dragon Ball Fighters right now um, let's just go through last year's pools um, let's just look through the list Let's click through Sonic Fox. We'll just do that. First guy on here, we'll click. Depending on how the size of the pools, either you'll have to play in winner, winner's round one, quote unquote, round one, quote unquote. So you may have to start here for the most part. And then people will start to play right here. So for the majority of us, you'll start here, winner's round one. So one, two, three, four. Five. You have to win about four to five games just to make it to day two of Evo because you got to win out your pool. If you, and this is you winning on the winner side, if you were sent to losers at any given point on this list, you have to play an additional game. So you may have to actually crawl your way through six matches just to make it to day two while you're still on edge of possibly being, of being eliminated. Let's just follow Sonic Fox's path because he won out of this pool. Let's say you did win out your pool. Okay. Sonic Fox is right here. Yeah, you only have to play about two games the next day to go into the semifinals. So after you win these two, you go straight to semis. If you're in the loser side, you gotta win out five games just to make it to this point to be in semis, which would be another six. But that'll be your sixth game. And this is day two. We're still still going through the list. Okay. Now we're in semis. We gotta win another game. And another game. And a third game. So, what is that? Nine games for the loser side of brackets. Day two. About four to five for the winner side. And remember, you, oh, that's even worse. The loser side, not only is it nine games, 
you got an extra three. So 12, 13 games if you're if you ever been sent to losers at any given point. And this isn't you just playing the typical um, Joe Shimo who doesn't know how to, who can barely hold a controller. That's, all that's done past round one if you're lucky enough to play someone like that. And if it's a newer game, sure, maybe round two, you play people like that. But after that, it's really you versus the rest of the world who are very competent in this game. So, yeah, for many people, when it comes to something like this, they're going to want to go home or to their hotel, and they're going to want to get the, all the time they can to go back Get real west, get real rested, or to like study film and whatnot. Do whatever they can to prepare for the top eight side of evil. That's really what a lot of people are gonna want to do when it comes to the three day tournaments. Um, so if you were to move the main event slot down to the prime time slot, so basically three to four hours earlier than it's anticipated to be at, a lot of games are gonna. That means the people are like playing early day three. Are going to be given three to four less hours to prepare for if they want to do the same routine. That means three to four hours potentially less sleep, three to four hours of less preparation or whatnot. So you may be saying, "What's the big deal? I could play Smash or whatever for three hours straight sitting in my living room." The thing, you're in your living room. You're not in a room where it's very humid. There's a lot of people walking by. It's very noisy, and you're playing on such a high stakes level that is very stressful. Um, playing ranked in a video game, yeah, there is something on the line and whatnot, but if you were to lose there, it's not the end of the world. If you were to lose in a tournament, either you're sent to loser's bracket or if you're already in losers, you're sent home. So if people are paying a bunch of money and flying here and they're playing some of the other best players in the world in the same scenario, the stakes are are higher by tenfold. So it's very stressful and it gets extremely exhausting for the players. You even see top players talking like, oh hey, you know, like after two or three hours I'm good, but once I hit hour five, I'm dead. That's about as true as it gets. So basically just wanna throw that out there. Like I said, I wanna know you guys' opinion down below. Which game you think should be main eventing Evo in a perfect world. Um and give your reasons as to why. Um what game should main event it based on its strategic value. And yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Okay, so open. You guys think I can close them? So bye.